Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a Harvest Moon Soap and I'm going to be using this silicone uh, eight cavity mold that I got on Amazon. Real easy to find. They're about two inches deep and when I pop these all out and pour my little moon embeds and pop them out and put them end to end, they fit one of these fits perfectly in my Essential Depot um, silicone loaf mold. So that's what I'm going to use for my embeds. I like them because they're a nice big one and this one I want it to be a harvest moon. So I think I'm going to do activated charcoal for the base of the soap bar for like a midnight color and then have my harvest moon embeds going through. So that's the plan today. The fragrance that I'm going to be using is cashmere suede type. It smells really good. It just sort of smells, I don't know, kind of romantic, moony, nighttime. I liked it. So I thought it went with the soap really well. And uh, so that's the plan. I'm gonna gather all my ingredients, get my hair pulled back, get my safety gear on, and we will start by making the moon embeds. And then we'll come back the next day after they're ready to pop out and make the base of the mold. So it's a two day process, so come along. <laughs> Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. That would be wonderful. And also, I'm on Instagram. If you want more up-to-date pictures and soaping inspiration, go check that out, too. Thank you. Well, I am going to do something new today. I'm going to do the heat transfer method with my lye water on my hard oils. I have never done this before, so I guess I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm going to do it for the first time here on YouTube. So... Uh, to my measured out distilled water here, I already have my Tussa silk fibers are in there so that when I add the lye, they'll melt. And then I'm going to go ahead and add it to my hard oils and it's supposed to melt it down. I guess I've always been cautious about trying this because I was worried about trace. Um, you know, why doesn't the hard oils come to a really quick trace with the lye and all that, but I've seen enough soapers do it. I love Jen. ANN Suds and such. Love her channel. Uh, she does it. It's just kind of her primary way of doing melting the soaps. And I tend to be an impatient person. I don't like to wait around for my lie to cool. So I'm like, well, if it works, this is right up my alley. So I put the lie in. This is getting very hot. The silk fibers have already melted. And I'm just waiting until there's no grit on the bottom and it's all dissolved. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it over my hard oils. And this, this is for my little moon embeds, my little harvest moons. And uh, I'll, after I get this going, I'll show you the color that I'm gonna use, a little wispy color in my moons. So, here we go. You're coming along with me for the first time. This could be exciting. And, you know, as if that wasn't challenging enough to do for the first time, um, I'm using a new recipe because I sized it down and I switched it up a little bit. So, you know, I guess I just like a challenge. So the way I've seen it, you just stir this. So I've got my lye water and my hard oils here. And as soon as the hard oils get melted all the way, I'll go ahead and add my liquid oils, which, uh, these are nice room temperature. So, while this is melting, um, for my little wispy color that I want to do in my Harvest Moon is Pewter Silver Mica from Brambleberry. And I just have that dispersed in a teeny bit of olive oil and it's just a very beautiful color. Uh, it's a light silvery pewter. It seems pretty true to its name. And um, so that is going to be the moon embeds here in my little uh, scoot them over here my little silicone molds and then for the base backdrop I think I am just gonna do I think I'm gonna do all activated charcoal I may do a little titanium dioxide swirl in there I'm not sure I would love to do another color like maybe a, a dark purple but I feel like any colors aren't really gonna stand out in the um, you know against the activated charcoal it's so dominant but I'll think on that because, again, I'm going to pour these. These need to sit overnight, so I have a whole night to think about the backdrop for our harvest moon. So I'm just going to put my stick blender in here to chop these chunks up. I think I've got it all melted. All right. Now we'll bring in our liquid oil. I'm going to... Oops, there we go. 
I gotta switch hands again. Me and my dominant right hand. Oh, I'm just virtually helpless with my left hand. I'm so, so dominantly right-handed, it's ridiculous. My son, one of my sons is ambidextrous. It's pretty cool to see. He did not get that from me. <laughs> I can tell you that for certain. All right, I'm just going to give this a quick buzz here. Make sure it's really well incorporated, and then I will add my fragrance after I get it split because I don't want anything going weirdness on me. Let me feel. So that's just, it's pretty warm right now. It's not hot. This is very interesting, this method. I'm going to have to continue to play around with it. I'm nervous doing this, but if it works out, this is pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to pull my stick blender out. And let's see if we can go ahead and I think that's pretty well incorporated. So I'm going to split off for my pewter color here. that in so pretty silvery it's a lovely color and I just want delicate little wisps of color in the moons I definitely I don't want like a strong you know differential in the colors just very wispy hoping that'll come through let me get another thing here I don't want to cross contaminate my colors all right, well, I'm encouraged. Okay, I'm gonna add some fragrance, just a little touch in the gray here. And the majority is gonna go over here. Get that stirred in. This fragrance is supposed to behave itself, which is always a plus. I tend to shy away from fragrances that have reviews that say, acceleration even if it's mild acceleration I mean if I'm super driven for that smell I'll use it but um, I really do I read a lot of reviews and I tend to go towards the fragrances that say that they behave well I just you know but sometimes the fragrance is so awesome that it's worth it if it's a troublemaker that's that way with some essential oils too they're just total troublemakers but they're worth it and you know it's one of those things all right we are very nice and fluid i'm going to go ahead and stick blend just a second because i want it pretty fluid for those wispy swirls but um just going to give it a quick buzz make sure we're really good here <laughs> that out so I can tip that all right we've got a nice light trace so I'm going to go ahead with my in the pot swirl here and I'm just going to go in circles around from different heights and I'm going to go ahead and scrape this all the way out oh, gotta switch hands here we go and I'm going to go around just once because I really want that wispy. Pull over our little molds here and start pouring our little harvest moons. We're going to let these sit overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and pop them out of the mold. Okay, and I'm back the next day and I had a little extra batter so I made some little flowers with my moon batter and uh, they're just really pretty, nice little gifts for people. So cute. Alright, here we have our moons 
And uh, it's a nice firm recipe. These should unmold really well. And that is going to be what our moon will look like. Very happy. Okay, so some of these have um, just a little bit of raised up, you know, where it wasn't completely level. Um, so I've got this handy dandy, really high tech peeler, got at Walmart for really cheap. And I'm just knocking down the bumps on the top so that I can make them fit. So I'm going to go ahead and do the heat transfer method again for the base since it worked pretty good on the little moons. I'm excited about that. Um, so first I need to get my additives in my liquid oils which is simply uh, kale and clay and I may go ahead and add my activated charcoal in there um, right now just so that it's nice and blended in because that is just going to be the only color is a nice big healthy dose of activated charcoal. Midnight sky for our harvest moon. So that's a rounded teaspoon. I'm going to do another one. Whoops. And that'll give me about, I'm going to say we're right at about a tablespoon of charcoal in there. And I just made a mess, but that's all right. We'll clean it up. And so I'm going to get that blended in and we'll come back. I've got my, this is aloe vera juice and Tussa silk fibers and a little sodium lactate in there. So I'll bring you back for the whole process when we're ready to go. I'm just going to get this blended into my liquid oils. Got this all blended up. Uh, I went ahead and put my fragrance in here with the charcoal, the kale and clay, and that's just my liquid oil portion. So now to my aloe vera juice and silk, I'm going to go ahead and add my pre-measured lye crystals here. I prefer the crystals. I have used the lye flakes um, and I felt like they didn't dissolve quite as smoothly. So I really do prefer the little crystals on the lye. So now I'm just going to stir this as it heats up and wait for that silk to melt. And look at that. I mean it melts really quickly. It's gone already. And uh, wait till I get rid of all the grittiness in the bottom so there's no undissolved lye left and we'll go ahead and add it over our oil. Sorry about that. Make sure there's no grittiness and that feels pretty smooth. It's just amazing how hot that gets, how quickly. Chemical reactions are fascinating. And I'm going to go ahead and pour my hot aloe vera lye solution over my hard oils, which is coconut oil, sustainable organic palm, and cocoa butter. That's what I've got in here to melt. All right. And we'll just zhuzh this around. So, the goal is, um, since my midnight sky is just going to be solid black with the activated charcoal, um, I want to get a kind of a medium trace on it when I pour so that it will suspend my moons and they won't sink all the way to the bottom. I'd like them to be suspended in the middle. So we're going for, you know, a good trace before we get to pouring. Also. I mean, this, this soap is going to be really, hopefully, really cool to look at, but it's going to be really good for your skin. Aloe vera is so, oh my goodness, it has internal benefits as well as skin benefits. I love aloe vera. I think it's an amazing plant. Um, so that's why I put it in here with the activated charcoal, which is also super good on your skin for multiple things. Uh, as well as internally. You know, one of the, it's an old fashioned, kind of an old remedy, but um, poison control and on the farm too, if your animal gets into something bad, you give it activated charcoal and it will absorb the toxins in your stomach. And um, yeah, it's kind of a first line of defense if uh, an animal gets into something that it shouldn't get into on the farm, is uh, get some activated charcoal down in there. But it's also good 
it's got, it's a powerful pulling agent and it's good on your skin too. So that's why I decided to go with the aloe. Not just a pretty soap, it's good for you. But again, here's my disclaimer. This soap will make you clean. I like to make it pretty to look at and it lathers in the shower and it will clean you. <laughs> All the other stuff is just my own opinion and you know, do your own research on all of that. So I'm not making any health claims. Isn't it sad that I have to say that, but there you go. So I'm just waiting for all these chunks to melt before I add this in. And because it's black, I want to be really careful that I get them all melted because I might not be able to see them once I add in my charcoal. So I may actually go ahead and pull my stick blender over here and just chunk up some of those uh, little chunks that aren't melting as fast. Because that's pretty warm still here. This is an amazing process. The heat transfer method. If you do it or like to do it, comment down below. I want to hear about your experiences. If you've done the heat transfer method, if you like it, if you don't like it, why. This is very, um, this is interesting for me to do this. Kind of I don't know, it seems counterintuitive with everything I learned about soap making and soap at cool temperatures and everything, but um, I mean, this is my first time doing it with the moons and this, and so far I am pretty pleased. So we're just adding our liquid oils and additives in here, and I'm going to stick blend those until I get a nice, you know, workable trace on it, and we'll go ahead and pour our bottom layer in the mold, and then we will hopefully suspend our little moons in there. That is the goal. And this cashmere suede is, I really, I'm kind of grooving it. I think it's a great smell. It's kind of mature. Like I said, it's a little romantic. Reminds me of a moonlit night. Which is perfect for this bar. Alright, I've got a nice sort of medium, thin to medium trace here. And we'll go ahead and pour our bottom layer in. I'm impressed. Of course, now this um, fragrant oil had really good reviews for not being tricky to work with. But um, I am just really <laughs> surprised and impressed with uh, this heat transfer method. It's kind of, kind of cool, especially if you're impatient like me, and you don't think ahead the night before to um, set out your lye and let it cool overnight, and then I'm the next day I'm having to ice bath it, and so for impatient people, <laughs> this is kind of cool. All right, let me see. I'm gonna to have to let this sit for just a few minutes. I want it to firm up a little bit so it's gonna suspend my moon. So I'll pause you and we'll come back when it's ready. All right, I am, it's still a little wiggly, like loose pudding, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. So I've got my first little moon embed and we're just gonna set it right here on the top. And let go, ah, it's sinking. I'm gonna wait on this back in a minute. Okay, let's give it another try. Go ahead and slide in our first couple here. I'm sort of holding them up because I don't want too much soap to get in between each one. So I'm just kind of hanging on to them here as I line them up.
I'm about to get stamping here on these. I have my stamp, my alcohol spray, and my little mallet. But I wanted to show you two things first. So um, when you line up little embeds like I did, sometimes you get bleeding in between. So some of these have a half moon. Not many, but a few. Like this one has a little bit of a bleed through. Um, and it's not that big of a deal. This one has more. So along with that, I forgot to tighten the string on my cutter. And what happens is you get lots of little, little bubbles in there. Um, so what an option that you can do, and what I'm gonna do is get a planer and just plane off. And if I plane off the top of this, it will smooth out those little bumps and it will expose the moon because it's a really beautiful moon embed in here and it does go all the way through, but there's just a thin layer of soap on there. So, just uh, full disclosure, showing you some little things that you can have. Um, if you use a column mold for an embed, you don't have any of those issues with the half moon there, but uh, I find the little um, soap molds easier to work with than the column molds. I've had trouble unmolding. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get these all stamped up